Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Roco te veré son de babaveri que te le coro papá eres o ti. Requete re coro papá eres o ti. Arandererere. Requete re 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 re. Roco te veré si catare. Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Roco te veresi que te le eres otro coro parecí. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Roco te veresoco te ve la varesoti. Raca te verica parezoteo. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Yes, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Um, oh, Jesus. I pray all is well. I pray all is well. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Jesus. I feel like I've been away forever. Um, and and I don't know why, but I believe that's because what has been established in the heavens, what has been established in this time, what has been birthed in the spirit, and the Lord. Oh, he is so faithful. God is so faithful. <clears throat> He's just so faithful. So there was something that shifted. Today is Monday. On yesterday. There is something that shifted on yesterday. And... The Lord said to me as I was in prayer yesterday morning that the new thing has been birthed and I could feel it. I could feel the birthing, the new thing. Oh, Jesus, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The new thing is the mind of Christ. Many of you have been established in the mind of Christ, the peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, the giant has been slain. Hallelujah. Jesus. My God, my God, my God. You know, you think about David. First of all, when he went to, you know, deliver food, right? He's going to serve his brothers. And they're like talking junk to him. They're like, you know, one of them said, well, what are you here for? You're so prideful, you know. They had no idea who their brother was in the spirit, right? They just didn't know, you know, but he went to give them nourishment. He went to give them food. He had no idea that he was really going to battle Goliath. And here's the irony of it that that when he went, you know, they were fighting the Philistines, right? Now think about this. They're fighting the Philistines and they're in battle, you know, the, the, the army of Israel. But what about Goliath? <laughs> you can fight all the, the Philistines and, and defeat them. But what about Goliath? You can't win without taking him down. Roco te velava resotia. 
And the Lord is saying right now that Goliath is dead. That Goliath no longer is in your way. And things are going to rapidly, rapidly fall into alignment because they already are prepared. They've been prepared. Things have been prepared. But God had to allow you to go through the certain path and way to establish the mind of Christ. You know, sometimes we go through things and we wonder, why didn't I see this? Why didn't I recognize? But the Lord, you know, if you look at some of my favorite Bible, some of my favorite Bible is John 13 through 17. I just love it. I mean, it's so good. It's There's so much meat in there. And, you know, most of the words are red. <laughs> but, uh, oh, it's so good. So, I am at John 16 and 12. And these are red letters. And he says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. You know, so it's like God knows, you know, what we are capable of handling at that moment. But, you know, in order to reach that next revelation, that next place, you know, you have to be willing to say, yes, Lord, and go and do or, you know, um, not do whatever he is requiring of you. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know how? Thank you, Jesus. After David, you know, he defeated Goliath. Now, mind you, he did it with stones. You know, if you look at, he was the youngest. He was the least likely candidate for the job. But God had anointed him for it. Okay, now once he defeated Goliath, you look and you see that Saul sees something in him and he appoints him, right, to be, you know, like his right hand man. But it didn't take long for the jealousy to come. And the Lord was speaking to me about the jealousy that you know, you may face the jealousy that may come from this place where, you know, you've been in the battle and you have been focused on, you know, okay, I've got to do this. I've got to defeat this Goliath that God has called me to. You notice that David ran to Goliath. David didn't run from the battle. He ran to it because why he said, because you defile the living God. You defile my living God. My God is alive and you have defiled him and I have come to slay you. And so the Lord really sent him into battle and he just went and he defeated Goliath, right? But then here comes Saul and the jealousy. And you know, this is where the testing, right? That the Lord was speaking to me and he was saying how this is a time where all of that has been established. You know, that testing, those trials of, is your heart in the right position? You know, David could have killed Saul twice. He could have literally taken him out. But because he honored the Lord, he honored the vessel of the Lord. He did not kill him. He kept him, um, you know, he kept himself undefiled. You see, because it's the heart. Oh, Jesus. And I want to unpack this word. The Lord has really just been downloading this word for days. Um, yes, Jesus. Because what's happening in the body is so beautiful. And so it's almost unexpected. You know, the birthing forth of the new thing. Now it shall be established. Okay. Okay. Oh, Robai Eresoti. Jesus. You know, and the Lord said, don't worry. They may gather together against you, but it will come to nothing. 
you know, it will come to nothing. And this is for, you know, his people in this moment. You know, we're facing maybe different battles. However, God is collectively doing something, right? There's a shift. There's a change. The changing of the guard, if you will. But you look at what happened with David. His character was tested. It was tried. Yeah, he had his moments. He ran into the cave and he, you know, um, he still, when it counted, when it mattered, he stood before the Lord with a pure heart. And this is what God has been doing, is testing and testing and trying and inflicting and allowing the infliction, the affliction of wound. And there's nothing greater than, you know, no greater pain than a heart wound and no greater power, you know, of love and forgiveness, right? It's easy to forgive one time. It's easy to, you know, forgive something that happened five years ago. But what about when somebody has been sent and positioned in your life by Satan? And God requires you to, you know, like Saul, to, to play the, the harp for them. And here Saul's throwing arrows at David, literally trying to kill him. And David's like, okay, I think I should go away for a while. But he still honored him. He still respected Saul. You know, he still gave him his due honor and respect. And, um... I mean, at some point he got smart and he was like, okay, <laughs> enough is enough, right? But this is what God was saying to me yesterday. You know that many of you have been wounded and afflicted in such a way that you didn't really see the full picture. But suddenly, now you're going to see. Maybe you're already seeing in this hour, in this moment, and you're going, wow. Wow. My God, thank you, Jesus. But like the Bible says, God will not reveal truth to us until we are able to really steward it and understand it well, right? The revelation, the download. And you know, until we're in a place where we are stewarding, stewarding what we have, he's not going to give us any more, right? And it's a great moment because literally the voice of the Lord, the mind of Christ has been established. This is the new thing. This is the new thing. And there's a generation of remnants where you're feeling this right now. Like, wow. You know, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes for our mind. If he can get here, he can get here to our heart. And he is very strategic. Okay? But so is our God. And guess what? Satan never wins. He doesn't win. He loses period. There is no victory for him. But suddenly things are going to be restored. Suddenly things are going to be restored in your life because, and, and it's going to be better than you thought. Things are going to be better than you thought. You know, God has lined up blessings and doors and, and things for you to walk into that are going to be better than you thought or you could have imagined or you, you know, you've just been obeying the Lord. And it's a time of restoration and breakthrough. Restoration and breakthrough. And you know, the Bible says, do not despise small beginnings, right? And the Lord was saying, you know, the revelation of, yeah, don't despise small beginnings because, you know, it's pouring out right now where, the, you know, the Lord was saying, many have been faithful in little, and so I'm increasing them. But with this increase comes extra work. You know, suddenly there's going to be so much more to do, so much more to steward, right? But also what he was saying is he's giving us grace upon these things to where we will just be so aligned with his mind that it won't be stressful. It won't be chaotic because we will just listen and obey 
and do as he is asking and it will just come peacefully. So in other words, you know, less is more almost like the key is staying in that place where his voice reigns okay some of you have had to remove yourself from situations um whatever it might be god knows right but think about this i am at 1 corinthians 2 and 9 but as it is written i is not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now think about that. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. And I'm going to go down to 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord but that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. But unless someone knows the Spirit of God or has the Spirit of God, they're not going to understand what God is saying, what God is doing, what God is showing you, where God is taking you. All of this will be such a mystery. And even more so, it just won't uh, sit well, right? The spirit of this world just cannot understand. The spirit of Antichrist does not like Jesus. So there is such a a war, but also a shift. There's been a shift where once again we've been removed. You know, it's like the separation has happened once again. And maybe you're experiencing this right now, okay? But what the Lord is saying is the new thing has been established. The new thing is being established. It has been birthed. And I literally could feel it being birthed. But what I didn't realize until just now is that it's the mind of Christ. That many of us are in that place where, you know, deliverance has happened. We've been delivered from our enemies, right? And you think about how does the enemy torment you? How does he torment us? through our mind, right? The warfare of our mind, the warfare of our abuse and our trauma and the situations of life and the worry and the fear and all of these things that amount to nothing because they stand up against a holy God and they cannot win. There is no way around it. We just can't give up. But there is a new place in God that we have reached, that we have embarked upon, okay? New endeavors, new assignments, new dynamic. And some of this is going to be difficult. The shifting and the sifting and the figuring out, you know, how is this all going to work? But it's just going to flow because it's ordained and because he's giving you his mind. Yes. You know, Isaiah 43, 19, I just keep hearing it. And it's something that is literally, you know, we've been feeling this and knowing it and hearing from the Lord for literally some years now, I feel like. But it's like now this new thing has been birthed. Now this new thing has been birthed. There's a birthing that's happened in the body of Christ. And now the new thing can begin to be established. And I know that there's fires and there's a process. And we all have these painful things, right? These decisions that maybe they don't make sense. And I want to encourage you. Many of the things that God has asked me to do. In this new season, um, in the past few months, they have not made sense. I literally, uh, 
the warfare that I face behind this and these different things that, um, you know, maybe I'll testify. I don't know. Um, but it's just been such a battle. Um, but I just encourage you. I'm telling you that because I encourage you just do it because I'm beginning to see the fruit of obedience in the things that I just don't understand in a new way. So I've done things, you know, the Lord asked me to give up all my possessions five years ago. <laughs> that sounds so crazy. And I did it, you know. I didn't even question him then because I feel like I was just like living in heaven. But I literally just, you know, um, and it's kind of like another season. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That was one of the things he said. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I feel the Lord. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Rakate <laughs> Beresi. Yeah. So, <laughs> he's taking us back to the beginning. He's taking us back to the beginning. So, many of you, he's going to take you back to the beginning. For me, the beginning was completely romanced and um, just totally, Jesus swept me off my feet. He, he just, he loved me back to life, to a place of where I am right now. And it took time, but in that process and the fire and the wilderness, oh Jesus, you, you lose that, you know, you can lose that, that. I don't know that that place is the best word for it. Um, and I think God allows it because he's processing us, right? But he spoke and he said, tell them, you know, I'm taking them back to the beginning. You know, back when I romanced them, back when I did this, back when I did that. And it might be a little bit different for each of us. But be prepared to be romanced again by God. Be prepared for him to once again sweep you off your feet in a new way. Because you have listened, because you have obeyed, because you have stepped into that new era, in that new place. And there's no coincidence that we're literally like one day into a new season. It's truly a new season. It's truly a new era. And this is not a time where we look back. This is not a time where we feel sorry for the demons, okay? We have to separate it. Of course, we do. Love never fails. But we cannot allow ourselves to be entrenched once again in, the, in those unholy alliances, okay? Because it's forward marching, forward marching, forward marching. One of the greatest things that the enemy can do to us and get us in bondage with our hearts and our feelings and what we, you know, want to happen with someone we love or with a situation. It doesn't work, you know. Nothing can be above God. And, um, Jesus, He will work all things together for the good. But nothing can be again uh, above Him. Nothing. And you would be surprised what happens in some situations, right? You know, some people just can't understand maybe some of the things you've went through or you've allowed or you've endured or why you are the way you are with a certain person or group of people. But they also don't see the fullness of the warfare. They don't see the fullness of the abuse. They don't see the fullness of the neglect. They don't see the fullness of what has happened to you behind closed doors because the enemy is very good at painting an ugly picture of you, right? We have got to be delivered from the worries of what they will say, of what they will think of. Well, you know, well, you know, you have no idea. And you don't even have to explain yourself. Don't waste your breath. Because why? Because the things of God are only understood by the spirit of God. And this goes for, you know, the whole spiritual world. You know, you cannot possibly discern what is happening in heaven and earth and you know good and evil if you have no understanding of the spirit of God okay we cannot concern ourselves with these things 
right? Because they're not going to make sense to people. People are not going to under, and it could very well be some of the closest people to you. Very well. It could very well be some of the closest people to you. And you, as long as you care, the enemy has a foothold. As long as you care, the enemy can twist and manipulate your heart. And this is where the Bible says, guard your heart. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because the enemy is strategic. Because he knows, you know, that if he can just hold you back, that he can stop you from delivering God's people. You think about David. Thank you, Jesus. You think about David. Once he defeated Goliath, what happened? Freedom for all kinds of people. The whole army of Israel, all of that, suddenly delivered from their enemies. Suddenly. See, God will allow you to go through these horrible, painful things, maybe even your whole life, <laughs> to pull you out of it if you will listen and obey him above all things, above all people, if you will listen and obey him, he will take you, he will deliver you from every hand of Satan, from every evil spirit that's tried to steal, kill, and destroy not only your life, but the calling on your life and who you are destined to be in Christ. And he will use you as a powerful tool against those very things, against those very things that people are facing at the hands of the enemy. Now, mind you, the people being used by Satan do not realize oftentimes that they are being used by Satan. They don't know. Jesus said it. I swear it was one of his most powerful phrases. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They literally don't know. Now, you think about some people do. They know what they're doing. They're just pure evil, right? But some people really have no clue. They've been traumatized. They've been abused. They've seen things. They've went through things. They've been drug addicted. Maybe they still are. And all of this, they have no idea how the roots of death are deep within them. And they're just claws for the enemy, just like a puppet, you know, with all these spirits, you know, just manipulating and maneuvering and trying to bring people into the kingdom of darkness, right? So I just encourage you, let it go. Let it go. Forgive them. You may need to walk away. Okay? You have to pray about that. I will never direct somebody. There's a lot of things that, you know, <laughs> only God can tell you. Okay? And this is one thing that I see as maybe a problem, you know, in the church or in the body of Christ. Is we try and tell people what we think and too much of it is what we think. Not enough of it is what God says. Not enough of it is Holy Spirit led. We have to give the Holy Spirit room to do what he does best. Because I cannot be somebody's Holy Spirit. You cannot be somebody's Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit is going to direct and guide you correctly. Now, when you're in tune with the Spirit of God, it is powerful. There are things that you can direct people and you're going, where did this come from? I don't even know because you, you found your humility. You found that humble place, right? Where you know it's not you. It's got nothing to do with your goodness. You know, um, yeah, God is truly giving people keys. Keys into new places, new realms, new assignments, new gifts, new. I just keep hearing new, new, new. And I know the world would say, you know, different. The news would say different. Some people say, oh, it's the end and the end. And, you know, it's pretty obvious that we're living in horrible times. People are lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of everything but God. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. Oh, but God has a people who will allow him to move. And if you don't allow God to move, he will move you. He will move you. He 
he will destroy your plans and it might not happen overnight he may let you build and build and build but if jesus isn't at the center of it all those who build the house if it's not the lord it's done in vain what does that mean oh lord order my steps oh lord your will be done see it's only in his will that we build these things that will last for eternity and I know the world just doesn't understand that. They just don't get it. And we have to be okay with who we are in Christ to stand and to stand firm and to tell the truth and to live the truth and to love radically. Love radically. It's what the world is really looking for. Not love that is conditional. Not love that points your flaws out. That's not real love. That's not God's love. That's our selfish, manipulative, you know, double-mindedness. That's not God. You know, the people are yearning. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Romans 8. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The whole world is waiting and yearning for those who know who they are. They're just waiting. The, the people perish for a lack of knowledge and they need the light of Christ to shine. They're just waiting. The whole world is waiting for those of us who know who we are in Christ. You see the glory that's being poured out right now. There's a glory that's being poured out right now. You see, we've been through some things, right? I don't know about you, but I know I have. <laughs> We've been through some things for Christ, for the light, for the kingdom of heaven, why we suffer violence and we take it by force. And it's time to take back. It's time to plunder. It is time. Zechariah 2 and 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, he sent me after glory to the nations which plunder you. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. For surely I will shake my hand against them and they shall become spoil for their servants. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion. For behold, I am coming and I will dwell in your midst says the Lord. He's living in you. He's living in me. Yeah, he's coming back. Absolutely he is. No, he hasn't already came. He's coming again. He's going to bust the clouds someday. Only God knows when, right? But his spirit is here already. He's already alive right here on earth. And he's in the midst of us, right? Because he lives inside of us. And it's time to plunder darkness. It's time to go even more into the depths of what he's got for you, what he's calling you to. Get ready and be prepared because it's going to just shift and happen. Whew. And you're going to look back and miss the moments of quietness. And I say that um, to tell you to value those moments value those moments where maybe it doesn't feel like you're being used or you know you feel overlooked or you know value that time with God because you know the, you can never waste moments in his presence right what he can do in his presence is greater than what we could do in a lifetime and he can do it in a day a month you know his presence is the power the only real thing that we have what saves us what sanctifies us what keeps us holy what keeps us on track his voice his presence his spirit jesus 
and he's living on the inside. You know, you think about a flower, and I'm almost done. You think about a flower, and you think about right before the flower, you know, pops open, right? That it it looks so shut, right? I mean, it just looks so almost like forced shut. And, you know, then suddenly, bam, it pops open. It comes open, and it just blooms, and it's springtime. And many of you are in that place. And maybe the pressure of the bud of the flower has you overwhelmed. And you don't see the light because you're hidden for now, right? But suddenly, suddenly, the flower pops open. And not just you see the light, but they see the beauty of Christ. It's happening. You may not feel that way, but it's happening. You stay in that place, in that position of humility at the feet of Christ, and it is bound to happen. There's no devil in hell that could stop it. And it's beautiful. You know, this Sunday marks five years that the Lord miraculously took an addiction away from me that stole so much, 12 years plus. 12 years plus out of my life and uh, a lot of time with my children a lot a lot a lot and the Lord literally reversed my addiction when I used I had withdrawals like if I told you the whole story it's all in my book in detail but it's it's amazing like it's just amazing you know, but make no mistake, everything we go through is destined. We are destined to go through these things. Now, there's nothing greater than having the alignment of being in the will of the Father. But nobody comes to the Father unless they're drawn, right? Nobody comes to Christ unless they're drawn by the Father, you know, and what we go through, even our stupid decisions, you know, even putting up with abuse and in torment and trying to love and trying to, it's all a part of the plan so that we will be equipped to be who we need to be for the people in the future. And just like you're prepared for right now, God is already Preparing you for later and greater. You know, because soon to come, the seasons change, right? It's exciting times. There's great things. Miracles, signs, and wonders follow you. Imagine that. Miracles, signs, and wonders follow you. What's the key? Jesus, the mind of Christ, to know his voice. To know his word is to know who he is, right? Abide in his word. I can't say that enough because it's true. You abide in his word and in his presence in prayer. And you will go way beyond what you can plan because it will be his will. You know, I never would have thought that half the stuff that even is happening right now in my life would even be possible. You know, um, and that's just real. That's just real. So uh, I love you all. I'm going to go and I pray this bless somebody. And God is just good. Till the next time.